Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday evening virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. And uh, we are going to begin our pre-service meditation. So we're going to join together in meditation for the next 10 minutes. So I invite you to just get still. Whatever you are seated in right now, just sit up enough so that you don't have a tendency to slouch over, maybe fall asleep. But allow your body to relax. Let's take a nice deep breath together. And as we breathe out, just release any sense of what has gone on up until this moment. Another breath. And as we breathe out, releasing any thoughts about what is yet to come. Just bringing our awareness into the now moment. And using the breath as a focal point for our minds. Just to notice the in-breath and the out-breath. You may wish to silently repeat to yourself, breathing in as you breathe in, breathing out as you exhale. And the mind has a tendency to want to wander off Get involved in thoughts, notice sounds, feelings. If that happens, it's perfectly normal. First, try to call forth absolute compassion and non-judgment. Just observe. Notice where the mind went. Maybe label it thinking, feeling, hearing. And then very gently bring your awareness back to the breath. Breathing in, breathing out.
And so gently bringing our awareness back into the body temple. Maybe wiggle your toes. Just move around a little bit to re-anchor your attention into the body and as you feel comfortable, just open your eyes. And so, once again, welcome. Welcome to those of you who joined us since we started the meditation. We're so glad with you, you're with us this evening via Facebook Live and Zoom for our Wednesday evening virtual service. Let's begin our service, as we always do, with our opening chant that is being led by wonderful Margaret Owens and Sam Krieger. <laughs> Margaret. So let's join to together in knowing that truth at a deeper level, that God truly is in this place because that presence that we call God is ever present fully and equally throughout creation. Everything is created out of the one life, the one power, the one infinite, invisible, pure, infinite, unconditional love infinite intelligence, infinite creativity that propels itself into creation to give itself the experience of discovering, knowing, and being itself uniquely and creatively in all forms of itself. And so I, I know I exist as an emanation of this life, that God's nature is my true nature. And as that's true of me, I know it to be the truth about each and every being gathered for this virtual service this evening. It is a truth for every being everywhere. We are all one with and one of the life of God. And so I absolutely know that that presence of God is unfolding and revealing its nature throughout our time together this evening, that we come together feeling the calling of spirit to have a greater knowingness and realization and experience and expression of itself through us, and I know this service supports that intention. We awaken to that vibration of love in each of us as we come together as a community. I know we feel and are uplifted by the love of all those who are of service this evening. We are inspired and uplifted by the music, by God flowing through Sam and Margaret this evening. I know that I am open to being that vessel through which the word that is to be heard, to be spoken this evening is spoken. That this is a divine idea in God's mind and I am simply a vessel. That everything that is shared is something I too, along with everyone else, have come to know at a deeper level this evening. 
And so I'm giving thanks right now for all the revealing of truth, the awakening to spirit that we all get to experience during this time. And in gratitude, I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, amen. And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. of the conflicts and the absurd I could just let it go let it go now let it all melt away like ice cream on a summer's day and trust the flow yes just let it go and realize it's all gonna be
Beautiful. Thank you, Margaret. Oh, and this is the day to be thinking of ice cream on a summer's day, isn't it? Good evening, everyone. Gee, I've said that three times this evening, so I hope you know. I'm wishing you a good evening, and I'm glad you're here. So tonight I'm looking at this idea of lightening our journey, which is why that song was so perfect. You know, I've always resonated with this uh, metaphor of life being a journey, and I guess it's not surprising that it appeals to me, you know, just based on my love of travel that I think was instilled in me from the time I was a toddler, uh, since, you know, from the age of two, I think was the first time that I joined my family as we traveled to France for part of our summer vacation to be with my father's family, and that became an annual event. And I really got to enjoy this whole thing of traveling and, of course, hearing about my mom's experiences growing up in Southeast Asia and all these different countries and about all the different cultures that really awakened this desire to travel and to get out there and see the world. And what's ironic about this topic, as I mentioned last week when I announced my talk title for this week, is I think it's ironic that I should talk about lightening the journey because traveling light isn't exactly one of my talents. <laughs> You know, this is the guy who, during his teens, when going to spend, you know, half of his summer vacation with his family in France, brought his entire Barbara Streisand long play record collection. And she was already quite prolific at that point. She had quite a few albums out. As time went on, you know, as I got into my later teens, I had a little bit of Bette Midler, Liza Minnelli. You think I was giving my family enough of a clue? Um, <laughs> at that time, it really was OK. I don't know if they didn't have the same kind of baggage weight restrictions they do today, because we always managed to do it. I would bring all the things I wanted, because the types of trips we were doing, it wasn't, yes, we did sightseeing, we went to places, but that wasn't the main gist of our uh, time there it was just to hang out at my grandparents place to be with family and so of course I would bring all the things I would want to have with me you know during my summer vacation but as I got older and started to want to travel to other destinations and go on trips where I might be visiting multiple places in one trip I got to see how uh, excess baggage can really weigh us down and be problematic. So I've learned over the years that I need to be more judicious about what to bring and what not to bring. And I'll, I'm going to admit that maybe because a sense of that wasn't instilled when I was young, that it still is a challenge. I could really struggle with it as I'm preparing for a trip. I see my partner Joe is just like, ah, oh, he knows, he just takes out, he's done, and I'm still you know, deciding, you know, how many pair of underwear I need to bring for the trip. So if you happen to be one of those people who, when you're packing for a trip, can't decide which pair of sneakers to bring, because, okay, on the one hand, you know, the white pair probably is going to get scuffed. But then again, you know, what if you're touring around the Czech Republic and you're in Prague, and you run into some British couple, and you hit it off, and you get to know each other, and then they invite you to come play a set at Wimbledon. And even though you're not a tennis player, well, of course, you know, you want to see us, but you didn't bring the white sneakers. It could happen, right? If you're the kind of person that starts thinking about all these scenarios of what we might need, and so you start bringing way more than, than you need, I understand. I've got it. But what I do know is when we're judicious about what we don't need to bring, it can really make the journey easier and more pleasant. And so it is with life. 
You know, there's the old expression of us carrying baggage through life, you know, the baggage of past hurts and experiences, old beliefs that don't serve us. In Science of Mind, we'd refer to these as the false beliefs in lack and limitation, the ways that we're telling ourselves, I'm not enough, there isn't enough, I can't because, I need things to be this way for me to be happy. All of these are beliefs that we've picked up along the way that inhibit our experience and expression of God's nature that lies right at the center of our being all the time. So in looking at this metaphor of uh, traveling light through life, life being a journey, I'd say there are things that we want to bring and things that we want to let go of to make life's journey light and enjoyable. So let's start about at looking at some of the things that we should release. And you know, from our teachings, any of you who have taken the foundations class, that's our beginning uh, entry level class for our certificated classes in Science of Mind, you've probably seen the whole thing about the kingdoms of consciousness and along the way for us to move into a greater experience of God's goodness, we need to let go of blame, shame, regret, the need to control, and a sense of separateness, a sense of us being separate from God. Okay, that's a lot of things I just threw there. So let's start with blame. You know, whether it's blaming someone else a life circumstance, um, or you know, even if it's ourselves that we're blaming because we did this and it resulted in this, whatever, whatever uh, we are blaming, blaming brings up a sense of resentment, contempt, it deflates us, it makes us feel like, okay, because of that now I can't. We're weighing down our consciousness, we're weighing ourselves down with the idea that some circumstance, something we did or something someone else did to us now denies us the ability to be happy. We're giving our power away, right? We are denying that God's nature in us is greater than any mistake that we may have made, any hurt that we've experienced, anything any circumstance we've found ourselves in or that we find ourselves in right now. We're denying the fact that there's that goodness of God in us that can find a way to make good of anything. It's always there. And it doesn't mean that we have to deny the fact that we may have acted inappropriately or others have acted inappropriately toward us or that some of the circumstances that we find ourselves in are difficult and challenging. We can admit it, we can accept it, but we want to ask ourselves, now, how am I going to take this and move forward constructively? We don't want to stay at the level of effect of something else, saying that we can't move forward and experience God's nature. We're turning our back on God's love and joy and abundance in us that can make good of anything. And the same goes for shame and regret. It's not, it's not that we don't want to feel remorse for things that we could have done better or maybe have some remorse for not having done something that we could have done that would have brought fulfillment to our lives. Because having remorse, we can look at, okay, that didn't, that didn't go as well as it could have, or I didn't show up as well as I could have. But then we just want to say, so now what do I want to do with that? You know, it's a matter of saying, what have I learned from this that I can now move forward? Having learned that, I can do something constructive. Because we're reminding ourselves 
that God's love and joy, wholeness, beauty, creativity in us is untouched by what's happened or what didn't happen that could have happened. And we're asking ourselves that, okay, knowing that, how do I call that goodness of God forth? Each time we do that, we remind ourselves of our oneness with God. We're activating that spiritual essence of our being, which helps us to release our sense of separation, which we say in Science of Mind is the root cause of all our human challenges and suffering and disparate conditions in the world. It all comes out of our sense of feeling separate from God when in fact we can never be separate from God. We can only believe we are or feel like we are and therefore create negative conditions for ourselves as a result of that. Regarding the idea of letting go of control. You know, one of the things that we really emphasize in this teaching is that as expressions of God, as finite emanations of this infinite life, we are in this constant relationship of co-creating with the bigger presence of God, with that bigger essence of finding ways to call forth more of its nature. And so we will perceive ways to experience more love or more joy, beauty or abundance. We'll think of finite ways, and we do teach that God is never withholding from us. So when we really uh, are absolutely solid and steadfast in our belief that this is possible for me, we can move mountains to create circumstances, manifest forms of good, that at one time we might not have felt possible. And that's all wonderful. But we also limit our experience of God's nature when we say, it has to be like this. See, as we start to realize that, wow, when I really believe that I can have that job, by doing that, by believing that, I was able to manifest that. I was able to manifest this greater experience of financial prosperity by really believing in it. But there's a certain point where then we can start getting caught up of, I have to manifest all of these things in order to feel good. And we're losing sight of the fact that we don't need, it. God doesn't need anything in the outer world to feel good. It's a matter of us remembering the goodness inside of us that brings forth different forms of good in the world. And so what we want to do is adopt a mindset of seeing the possibilities of some greater experience of love or happiness that we can envision for ourselves and absolutely reminding ourselves that in God, there's nothing that holds that back from me. Unconditional love doesn't withhold. But as we're perceiving that good to be open to the greater possibilities of the divine, we want to feel the vibration of it, like whether it it's an expression of greater adventure or whatever, and say this or something equivalent or even better, that there is some way for me to experience this essence of God's nature, either as this idea that I'm imagining or something equivalent or greater. And that lightens the journey for, for us from not feeling like holding down onto, it has to be like this. Now, as far as things that we want to bring with us, what we want to put in our luggage as we journey through life, I think probably first and foremost, I would say a sense of compassion and forgiveness is tantamount to, lighting, to um, lightening the journey for ourselves. Compassion and forgiveness both for ourselves and others. You know, the ability to recognize that we and everyone else out there, we're all works in progress and we're all awakening to that divine nature in us. We all have ways that we haven't yet awakened. And 
just realizing that can go a long way for us to just say, okay, that's because I haven't fully awakened or they haven't fully awakened. It opens us to recognize how to move forward constructively versus holding on to resentment and contempt for what others may have done to us or ways that we didn't show up at our best. That can, compassion and forgiveness are qualities of God that live in us that when we call them forth can just lighten the journey beyond what we can imagine. I think we definitely want to bring a sense of optimism. You know, just the, accepting that sometimes things aren't going to go the way we want them to, but no matter what, there's going to be a way for us to make good of what is because that goodness of God in us is going to find a way to do that. To keep remembering that, that builds uh, a sense of optimism to bring to life. I think we all know when we're feeling optimistic, life feels a lot lighter. Big on my list is a sense of humor. You know, <clears throat> being able to laugh at our human fo foibles and our challenges really goes a long way to prevent us from over-identifying with them and dealing with them in a more light and playful, you're just laughing at, oh, there I go again, or there's that situation showing up again. Aren't we all just crazy sometimes? Let's step out of this pattern and figure out a different way to be. And certainly, I think, a sense of joy, you know, knowing that there's always a way to feel good, even when we're doing something that might feel like we have to put a lot of effort or maybe challenging. If we can bring love to it, like saying, by doing this, I know that I'm doing something that ultimately is good for others or blesses my life, there's some joy even in efforting in some of the difficult things that we do of doing it and moving through it. You know, as Dr. Mark reminded us on Sunday that we can choose to be happy because there's that vibration of joy in us all the time. So as I was thinking about that and as I've been working with that idea of choosing to be happy each day, I found a way to reinforce that is to also say, how can I share some of my joy or happiness with others? You know, and before you start thinking again, oh boy, yet another assignment, it could just be for me sometimes, I think about something that makes me happy and think of people that I love and being able to share that with others, even in the realm of just thinking about that and extending that love outwardly because we're all interconnected. I'm sharing my happiness, I'm sharing my joy with others. When we do that, we're not only, when we share happiness, we're experiencing it for ourselves. And so, you know, that idea of being able to experience happiness each step along the journey, I think is really helpful. So what I would invite us to look at this week is, what negative ideas are we holding about ourselves or others? What wounds might we be holding on to? That even if we don't feel like we don't know how to release them, that we know that there's a presence and power of God that does know and just open ourselves to saying, Spirit, show me the way. Show me the way to release this hurt, this negative feeling I carry about myself or others. I open to that. And then to follow that up by asking ourselves, how can I align with that sense of happiness and joy and share it with others? So continue doing the work that Dr. Mark had suggested we do this, work, this week. In doing that, we lighten our journey by activating and feeling our connection with God's light, love, and joy that's always there for us to experience and express each step of the way. So let's take a moment to turn our attention inward. And I'm going to invite you to 
find just one person. Could even be yourself that you are holding in contempt or blame. And whoever that is, notice the tightness, the heaviness in the heart, the heaviness of that energy, and call forth God's compassion and forgiveness. Call forth that energy that allows you to realize we all make mistakes. And feel this energy lightening that sense of woundedness, of blame, of shame. Lightening that sense of things have to be a certain way, that person has to change, I have to be a certain way. Just soothing you and showing you the way into moving forward constructively, finding your way back into peace and happiness. And notice how you can feel that sense of happiness that you'd like to experience more fully just by imagining it. It's already there. And so imagine yourself aligning with it and finding ways to share it with others in your day-to-day -day life, no matter what's gone on before, what's going on now. Feel the lightness of knowing that there's a part of you that can always find ways to be happy and to share love, joy, and happiness with others. And so I invite you to set your intention to release any energy that weighs you down from experiencing and expressing God's love, light, joy, well-being. Just be willing to release anything that inhibits that and follow that up by setting an intention to embrace a greater sense of love, light, joy, well-being, being ever-present within and around you at all times. Just be willing. It all starts there. And from this place, I invite you to join me in consciousness, in knowing the truth about some of the challenges that we face along our journey. And so knowing that God is always present in every moment, in every situation, that we are all filled and surrounded by that nature of God. Let us know together the truth. For those who are experiencing any kind of challenge around the changes that we go through in life here on Earth, that everything is always in a state of flux, that everything is always transitioning from one form into another, and if we weren't ready for something to transition out of our lives, it could even be the transition of loved ones into the next life, it can produce great pain, but let us know the truth that God's nature in us all, that, can, that connects us all, whether on this plane of existence or other planes, that it is changeless, birthless, deathless, and there's always some new way for us to call it forth and experience it, and thereby step out of the sense of pain and loss into an experience of greater good. Let us know the truth for those who are dealing with any human experience of dis-ease or discord, that the nature of God is perfect, whole, and complete. There's this vibration of perfection and wholeness and health at the center of every part of creation. And as we know this truth, then the, the avenues through which that healing is to occur, to move out of the sense of dis-ease and discord is revealed. We know that for those who are 
suffering from any health condition and right now in this pandemic that there's that healing energy of the divine that is revealing itself to move us out of those experiences into that greater expression of its health and wholeness. Let us absolutely know that for those who feel creatively challenged, not being in a place to feel fulfilled, that each and every one of us carries the gifts of God within us and we're here to express those gifts uniquely and creatively and that each one finds their way into sharing their unique talents, yet their gifts in a way that is appreciated, valued, and that they can feel fulfilled because God is always there to fulfill itself through every one of us. We also know that the nature of this one is infinite, that it owes nothing of lack and limitation. So for anyone experiencing any form of lack and limitation, let us know the infinite abundance of spirit, that giver, receiver, that knows no limits to its capacity to give and receive and see a transformation whereby there's a greater capacity to give and receive love, to be creative and celebrate the creativity of others, to be absolutely open to the inflow of all needs met financially and in any other ways and to also be able to give back generously. And I know absolutely, and we join in knowing that the nature of the divine in all of us is love. And so where there's anything that looks unlike love in anyone's life, we know that that is simply a temporary experience that is shown up for healing and revealing of that vibration of love that allows us to absolutely hold ourselves and others in compassion, to absolutely feel our oneness, to feel greater love for ourselves, others, conditions in the world, all circumstances that we walk into. And I know that that vibration of love is always for some greater good, so let us set our own individual intentions for greater good in silence. And whatever these intentions may be, greater good for ourselves, for loved ones, for situations in the world, I absolutely know that we are feeling the impulse of God's love for some greater experience of its nature to be revealed as we know that God is in all these situations. Good is revealed for that is God's way. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth, and it's from this place that I'm so grateful, and in gratitude I just release this word knowing it is so, it is done in the mind of God, and so it is, together we say, Amen. Amen. And so this is a time in our service for affirmative giving. 
Uh, you should be seeing a link coming up right now if you'd like to make your donation online. Uh, if you're having trouble getting to that, it's our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and uh, that'll take you to the donation page. Of course, you can continue to send in your checks, as many, as many of you have been doing, and we'll be here, as always, after our service for 30 minutes if you'd like to call in and make a donation via credit card or ATM uh, debit card over the phone. Happy to take it that way. Giving you thanks right now for your continued support. And with that, let's hold our gifts to our hearts as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Thank you so much, Margaret. Thank you all for being here this evening as we bring our service to a close. Just want to say thank you to everyone who's been of service. Um, tonight, we'll start with those of you out there in virtual land. Uh, thank you so much to Bob Lyon and Gail Pollott, who are holding vigil for us this evening to our Zoom hosts, Brenda Jordan and Lynn Romanowski, um, and to Melissa Allen for her support on Facebook Live. Once again, thank you to all of you. And here in the sanctuary, once again, Adam, thank you so much for being there to make sure we're heard and seen, to Doreen, to Blair, and to Alex, for being here to make sure the cameras are going and everything's happening technologically, and to our awesome, awesome diva, <laughs> Margaret Owens, thank you so much, and Sam for the beautiful musical support, as always. So appreciate it. Thank you, and again, thank you to all of you for being with us. Uh, just a quick reminder that uh, donations over the phone uh, can be made for 30 minutes after service, so that's by calling 818-762-7566, that's the church number, or go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that'll take you to the donation page. Prayer with a practitioner is available after the service on Zoom. Uh, so for 30 minutes, we'll have practitioners there so if you join us, if you're currently on Facebook Live and you join us on Zoom, if you want prayer with a practitioner, we'll put you in a private breakout room so you can have one-on-one -on -one private prayer. Uh, we invite you to continue emailing your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org or call into the office 
and select option four that will let you leave a recorded message of anything you would like us to be praying for. We collect those requests daily and send them out to all our practitioners so that you're being supported in prayer. Uh, so please take advantage of that. Next Wednesday, my topic will be spiritual alchemy. Uh, that should be fun. Let's see what happens. Uh, we invite you to stay informed and up to date uh, through our website, nhcrs.org. You can sign up there to get our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters so you know ahead of time what's going on here. Uh, and if you didn't know until now, uh, Dr. Mark's 2020 Abundance Workshop is happening on Monday evenings, 7 to 8.30 p.m. through August 31st. You can still register to join, even if you haven't been part of the prior classes. Uh, this amazing Zoom workshop is based on the book, The Art of Abundance, 10 Rules for a Prosperous Life by Dennis Merritt Jones, and the cost is responsible giving. And uh, our Love and Kindness Ministry will be dropping off food for the homeless this Sunday, August 16th. Uh, if you're interested in supporting this ministry, please visit our website. And uh, a reminder that we have the Zoom virtual patio before and after service, so 20 minutes before and then after service, if you join us on Zoom, you can visit with your congregants. I'll be available as our Dr. Mark and Reverend Nadine on Sundays for a reception line. Uh, our teens continue to meet on Sundays at 9.45, Wednesdays at 7.30. Our men's group meets every Sunday at 11 a.m. Our Zoom meditation is still going strong Mondays through Saturdays at 8 a.m. So all this information to connect to any of that, just go to nhcrs.org and you'll find how to connect. And with that, again, thanks for connecting with us this evening. We so appreciate it. Let's turn our attention inward one more time. Giving thanks once again for all the ways that that infinite love, infinite life of the divine has revealed itself to and through us this evening in our time together. I know that as we've come together throughout the evening, that in different ways, we have had experiences of awakening, things have shifted in consciousness, so that we leave, we move forward with a greater sense of that divine essence at the center of our being. It lightens our journey, and we move forward with that greater sense of lightness we share with others, it ripples out into the world. And so I give thanks for all the blessings we received and how they multiply as we go forward. And in gratitude, I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. Thanks again. Let's join together in song. Blessed. 